So we start Bram Stoker's story of Count Dracula here off the coast of Whitby. While staying in Whitby, Stoker heard of a shipwreck which had happened five years earlier. A Russian vessel had run aground at the bay. With a little imagination, this was turned into how Dracula arrived in England. Stoker describes a creature resembling a large dog which came ashore here, off a boat that had ran aground just like the Russian vessel had. The creature then runs up the 199 steps to the graveyard of St Mary's Church. Some of the names on the grave feature in the book as Stoker took inspiration from the weathered, sea-battered gravestones that stood here. Dracula is said to be buried here in St Mary's graveyard. St Mary's Church stood in the shadow of Whitby Abbey ruins. The ruins are also described in the Book of Dracula by Mina in her diary. Right over in the town is the ruins of Whitby Abbey which was sacked by the Danes. It is a most notable ruin of immense size and full of beauty and romantic bits. There is a legend of a white lady seen in one of the windows. Stoker was introduced to the real Dracula in a library on the quay of Whitby. He found a book in there which had recorded the experiences of a British consul in Bucharest. In this book, the author, a man named William Wilkinson, described a 15th century prince called Vlad Tepes who was said to have impaled his enemies on wooden stakes. Or, as history now knows him, Vlad the Impaler. He was known at the time as Dracula, which means son of the dragon. So let's explore why Whitby and its abbey became the birthplace of Dracula. On a headland overlooking the sea stands the imposing ruins of Whitby Abbey. Excavations on this site suggests it was occupied by a Roman signal station in the 3rd century AD. The erosion of the cliffs suggests that some of the site may have fallen into the sea. The church here was founded by St Hilda around 657 AD. In about 1078, a monk called Rainford founded a new monastic community here. In the 13th century, the monastery church was re rebuilt in the Gothic style it is today. The abbey did sadly succumb to Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. In 1578, Sir Richard Chomley bought the abbey buildings and its estate. The Chomleys abandoned the estate in the 18th century. The publication of Stoker's novel Dracula in 1897 gave Whitby a place on the map. In 1914, the German High Seas Fleet shelled Whitby and struck the Abbey ruins, which caused considerable amount of damage to the West Front. As well as Dracula, another author decided to base his stories here. Robin Jarvis decided to base his book written in 1991 here at Whitby. It is rumoured that inspiration for the books came from local folklore. 
Witchcraft was a good trade for women in the 1600s in North Yorkshire. Farmers used to turn to local witches for love potions or to find a cure for ailments. Farmers used to go to see witches to, for weather to induce rainfall, as well as many other good luck potions for spells for good crops. A witch by the name of Anne Pearson was an old lady who lived in a village nearby. She secluded herself to a forest and no one would dare seek her help. Until a nobleman came knocking one night to seek a potion to help his sick daughter. Old Pearson concocted a potion and sold it to the nobleman. Unbeknownst to the nobleman, the old woman had given him a potion which would paralyse his daughter from the neck down. When he returned to, to old Anne to beg for help once again, she cackled at him and slammed the door. That was what she intended the potion to do. The nobleman's daughter had a farmer lover though in living in the village, who came to hear about what the witch had done to his love. The farmer sought advice from a wise man who told him of a way that could break the curse. Old Anne used to change herself into a rabbit at night for call to cause mischief without being caught. The farmer waited until nightfall and shot the biggest rabbit he could find. Luckily he only injured the witch and he took her blood and some holy water and he rubbed it on the feet of his love, the nobleman's daughter. The witch died as an injured rabbit and the lady was saved and they lived happily ever after. So with all the local folklore and Whitby being Dracula's hometown, many tourists today forget that Dracula isn't real. They often ask locals, where is the famous burial place of the vampire of Whitby? Dracula.